Hello, nice to meet you all. My name is Alain Andrea. Hello, my name is Isa. We are here to present about psychological conditions, namely dissociative identity disorder. First of all, do you know what is dissociation? Maybe you had the experience of driving on autopilot. One minute you get in your car, and the next minute you have arrived at your destination. But you can't actually remember the details of the drive. Dissociation is a mental state in which a person becomes disconnected from their thoughts, feelings, memories, or sense of identity, or in a simpler word, disconnected from what's going on around you. Examples of normal and common everyday dissociation are daydreaming, getting lost in a book or movie, all of which involve losing touch with awareness of the surroundings. Usually, people can snap out of it easily. But when the feeling of disconnection becomes too intense and often, it will affect daily functioning, leading to dissociative disorder. Dissociative disorder is classified into three main types, which are dissociative amnesia, depersonalization disorder, and dissociative identity disorder. Each of these disorders falls along the dissociation spectrum based on their severity. Dissociative identity disorder, which is what we are going to focus on today, has the highest severity among others. Dissociative identity disorder or DID, also known as multiple personality disorder, is a mental health condition that is characterized by having two or more distinct personalities or alters. These identities control a person's behavior at different times. The distinct personality states usually have different names, identities, behavior, and self-image in how they view themselves. Each has their own unique and distinct postures, gestures, and way of speaking. Switching is the process by which each personality shows themselves and completely takes control of an individual's actions and thoughts. While the different personality states influence a person's behavior, the person is generally unaware of them and views them as memory lapse. As a result, the person will be unable to recall routine activities, important personal information, and stressful situations. Dissociation experiences can last for a short period of time, which is for hours or days, or much longer, for weeks or months. It is typically a long-term condition that develops as a result of severe trauma. In reality, GID is a rare disease. The prevalence is about 1.5% of the world population with more common in women compared to men. Now, let's learn a little bit about the effects of this disorder to physiological processes. Because of how we react to treats, trauma can trigger dissociation. To date, there are two theories that explain about the mechanism on how this causes various dissociative disorders. Firstly is the freezing or flopping. Normal people react to potentially dangerous circumstances by fight or flight reactions. However, if someone is unable to perform these things, they may respond by freezing or flopping. The freeze reaction is when someone are unable to move, as the body produces chemicals that numb the body and mind. Meanwhile, flopping occurs when the thinking process inside the brain are turned off. This causes the muscles to become floppy, and that person begins to follow others without question like a zombie. The second theory is disconnected distinct aspects of an event. The different aspects of the experience could be from behaviors, memories, feelings, thoughts, sensations, and perceptions that are not connected up. This means that the other people don't have to deal with them all at once. For example, that person may recall what happened during that particular event, but not the feelings or experiences that accompanied with it. Thus, the other people may feel as if various experiences sensation or beliefs occur to different persons inside themselves. Now, let's go deeper with the causes and risk factors of the ID. The ID happened as a natural defense mechanism against childhood trauma. When facing excessive mistreatment, children can disassociate from full awareness of that terrible event and develop dissociation as a protective behavior that lasts throughout adulthood. Traumatic situations that increase the likelihood of dissociative disorders include child abuse or neglect that is severe and repeated over a long period of time, unpleasant, frightening, or being abused by a large number of people. Similarly, 
the risk factors of DID usually involve people who have been repeatedly exposed to long-term physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. Some other traumatic situations such as war, kidnapping, or torture may also cause similar disorders in children and adults. Moving on to the signs and symptoms of someone having DID. People with DID have amnesia, multiple personalities, cognitive impairment, and memory impairment. Amnesia means memory loss that is more severe than normal forgetfulness. For example, they do not remember the art that they do not recognize having done, being called an unknown name by strangers who act in a familiar manner towards them, or might suddenly find themselves in a different location with no explanation of how they got there. There also might be periods of their life that they cannot recall. Secondly, it's multiple personalities. The idea causes loss of self-identity and turns the memory of a person into discrete sections, which results in the presence of two or more distinct personality states. They may have identity confusion, feeling like a different person, and encounter emotion, sensation, thoughts, and urges that do not feel like their own. Their preferences, perceptions, and memories, even their handwriting, shift between authors. Next is cognitive impairment. People suffering from DID usually have extrasensory experiences like living in a dream, hearing voices, and periods of extreme emotions. The last symptoms is the DID person may have memory impairment in which they cannot remember most of their childhood memories. They may also experience flashbacks of traumatic events and then find themselves unable to recall what they just remembered. Diagnosis in DID involves two phases, which are physical examination and psychiatric examination. The first phase is physical examination. This phase is to determine if any physical injury is causing DID-like symptoms. The patient undergoes several examinations such as electroencephalograms, lumbar punctures and brain imaging. If physical health conditions are ruled out, the patient will then refer to a mental health practitioner for a diagnosis. The next phase in diagnosis is psychiatric examination. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 5th edition or DSM-5, for a person to be diagnosed with DID, she or he must have two or more distinct personality states, have an experience of amnesia about personal information, self-identity, etc. Have trouble functioning in personal, social or occupational areas in life. Not face disturbances created by cultural or religious practices. Not have physiological symptoms from other health conditions like alcoholism, substance abuse, blackouts, seizures, etc. Other than DSM-5, psychiatrists often use diagnostic scales to ensure the severity of the DID symptoms in a patient and for differential diagnosis from other disorders with similar symptoms of dissociation. These include Dissociative Experiences Scale, Structured Clinical Interview for DSM Disorders, Rosage Test, Structured Interview for DSM-3R Personality Disorders and Dissociative Disorder Interview Schedule. There is no cure for DID, but combination of treatment can reduce the symptoms. Treatment for DID is a long-term treatment and involves several stages. The first stage focuses on stabilizing symptoms and ensuring safety. Second stage involves processing traumatic memories and working with trauma-based unhelpful beliefs. Third stage focuses on life issues, supporting healthy relationships and goals. In the ID, there are two types of treatment, which is psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy. Psychotherapy is the primary therapy, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, and dialectical behavioral therapy or DBT. This therapy focuses on identifying and working through past trauma or abuse, managing sudden behavioral changes, and merging separate identities into a single identity. Combination of psychotherapy and hypnotherapy is recommended as it may help people recover suppressed memories. In pharmacotherapy, medications such as antidepressant, anti-anxiety and antipsychotic can help to control certain symptoms of DID such as depression and anxiety. 
CBT aims to give patients the ability to recognize when their thoughts might become troublesome and give them techniques to redirect those thoughts. Communicating with the alters and helping the patient to find more adaptive coping strategies such as relaxation exercises, taking breaks from the setting for a few minutes, and helping the patient gain control over cognitive distortions of the self and work can help patients to cope rather than switching to other personalities when distressed. DBT helps patients to find ways to accept themselves, feel safe, and manage their emotions to help regulate potentially destructive or harmful behaviors. The settings in DBT include group therapy, where the behavioral skills in a group setting, individual therapy, where the behavioral skills adapted to their personal life challenges, and phone coaching, where patients can call therapists between sessions to receive guidance on coping with a difficult situation they are currently in. There are few strategies used in DBT. The first strategy is called mindfulness. This emotion skill will lead individual to practice being present and fully aware within the moment, feel life for what it is and not live years in the future. This specific skill is considered as the foundation. A patient will not be taught any other skill sets within DBT classes until they have a full grasp of being a mindful person. These skills can also help patients to accept and tolerate any form of powerful emotion they may have to deal with. The second strategy is distress tolerance, where an individual will learn the art of acceptance and change. Interpersonal effectiveness help patients to learn how to interact with the people around them, personal relationships and the challenges that can create a stressful environment. Lastly, emotion regulation helps patients to learn to control emotions such as anger, depression, anxiety and frustration. Once a patient has learned how to manage their feelings, they decrease their vulnerability to any form of painful emotion caused by situations that are entirely out of their control. In pharmacotherapy, antidepressants can stabilize mood and reduce intrusive symptoms that trigger dissociation. Examples of antidepressants include atypical antidepressants such as bupropion, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or SSRI such as fluzetine and sertraline, and selective noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor or SNRI such as dulozetine and venlafazine. Studies show that a combination of SSRI and lamotrigine, which is an anticonvulsant and mood stabilizer, is an effective treatment for dissociative disorders. Anti-anxiety medication help to treat anxiety symptoms. Treating anxiety symptoms can reduce the severity of dissociative symptoms. SSRI such as flozetine and sertraline are commonly used to treat anxiety for people with DID. However, benzodiazepines are typically contraindicated because they can exacerbate dissociation. Atypical antipsychotic medication help a condition in which a person has lost touch with reality. It has been found to stabilize mood and to reduce anxiety and intrusive symptoms in people with dissociative disorders. Examples of antipsychotic medication include aripiprazole, olanzapine and risperidone. In DID, it is important for patients to come to session with the psychiatrist. For family members and close friends of patients with DID, it is important to educate them about DID and its causes because it can help them to understand the changes that can take place as the personality is being reintegrated and help them to recognize symptoms of recurrence. Family members and close friends need to stay calm during switches to avoid unnecessary panic situations. Lastly, it is important for them to learn how to recognize the triggers of the switching. That is all from us. Hope you enjoy our video and don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you for watching.